down really an output equation. So uh, L is circulatory. All what we need for the output equation is L and moment. Circulatory, negative L and moment. So we have 2 by rho UB. XL dynamic 1, XL dynamic 2, plus B3 quarter. Let's fill in these matrices. So the left is 2 by rho UB times the B3 quarter unsteady, which is here, but I need them in negative, so I'll have the negative here actually, and I'll copy them as is. This is this part as is here. And here the same thing is 2 pi rho u b in the 2, and here is negative 1. The moment, this is the moment circulatory. How to get the moment circulatory from left circulatory? Where does the left circulatory act? We just have two forces, two left forces. Circulatory left and non-circulatory left. Where each one act? Circulatory acts where? Circulatory acts, acts where? Hmm, come on. Where? Center. Yes, the dynamic center, which is quarter core for flat plane. Okay. Non circulatory acts where? Half. That's it. Okay. One quarter core, one half. And the effective point that computes the angle of attack at is the three quarter. Okay? Very convenient. So uh, you get the left. And multiplied by the distance between the quarter and the hinge, which is half plus a times b. So whatever thing you have here, you will multiply this guy by negative b half plus a. Negative b. You will multiply by, okay? Negative b half plus a. Here it will be clear, b half plus a. And this is our Q, this is our F aerodynamic, X aerodynamics, H aerodynamics, U aerodynamics. Sure. So this output equation, along with this green, along with the state equation here, this is the state equation. And the output equation for the space model of aerodynamics. Yes. So I have a question like regarding the step response thing, like the transient response. Like in, in the case of the flutter problem, does that mean that the window, like the time window of the transient response, is like really big? Because transient response like usually small, like for a small amount of time. But if the flutter is happening continuously, does that mean like the it's always like it's never gonna get stable? Like constant, that means like the time window is really big, so maybe it's. We're not assuming that. Why do you think we're assuming because that? Because the flutter is happening, then is it like not ending, right? It's just happening continuously. The flutter is uh, endless because it's being fed by the structure. So it's interaction between structure and the other elements. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's, it's, it's a sustained oscillation. But does it have to be like a for a short time? So, so okay, let, let me tell you something which is important. This model alone can never give you eigenvalues of the imaginary axis. This model alone can never give you eigenvalues of the imaginary axis. This is really an interaction problem that you need both disciplines to interact with each other, aerodynamics and structure. I don't know if this answers your question or not. We did not assume that the flutter is fast enough or slow enough. If this confusion comes from the fact that we use the step response and everything has to happen within the transient, no. Why? Because we are not using this guy directly. It's the same thing for the frequency response. This is the benefit of the state space model. From this guy, this animal is only valid during the transient. You're very correct. But we derive the very generic operator, the transfer function. Now, this is applicable to any type of input, not necessarily state. Okay. And equivalently, the state space model. So this is why we really 
as dynamics and control persons, we really like to see this because this is, give me here any input, any type of input, I don't care. If it's sine, cosine, if it's step, if it's exponential, if it's t squared, I don't care. I will simulate this differential equation under that. Okay? So, in summary, here is your two models. X structure dot is A structure, X structure plus B structure, V3. What's the input to structure model? What's the input? What's the input? From physics, what's the input to structure? What you input to your structure? For the force, like forces. So we cast it such that it's the forces of the circulatory loads, lift and moment force. This guy is negative lift and moment circulatory. And the structural states have meanings because the way we developed it is Q and Q dot, where Q is itself is H and alpha. So they are H alpha, H dot, and alpha dot. Okay. The output equation is, the output was the V3 quarter to be fed to the aerodynamic load. This is F structure, X structure, supposed to be plus H structure times the input, but there is no H. We did not find any H here. I mean, right, it's just F structure times X structure. Can you tell me a physical meaning why? Why I did not find an H here? So over there, there is an H there. F times X plus H here. Right? In the structure, there is no H. You expect to see an H in, in, in most of the cases in reality or not? Do you see H? D matrix, D matrix, which I call it here. Do you expect to see it or not? So the output equation is something times states plus something times input. This something times input. We call it here H matrix. Most of the books are called <coughs> D matrix. Do you expect it to see in reality in most of the systems or not? No, why? Because it, see, it, it tells you that the output at this time and instant. This equation tells you what? The output at this time and instant depends on the states of this time and instant. That's fine, but the states does not show up instantaneously. The states needs time to build up, right? Through this dynamics. But if it has in addition to this part, so for example, let's let's say at time zero, y at time zero equal this constant times x at time zero. X at time zero is maybe zero initial conditions, so the output will not attain anything. But if you have another term plus h times u at time zero, this means if you apply u at time zero, you will get immediately output at time zero, right? The states will need time to build up, but you have direct relation with the output. For the structure, no, this direct relation does not exist. It's physically, it doesn't exist, right? Why it exists for aerodynamics? We discussed this before. Why? You remember this thing? Why it exists for aerodynamics? Because the unsteady output will show you the steady, the closet steady part. Do, do you, anybody remembers, so this is here the, the thing that the unsteady part depends on its steady thing on the input, right? Directly. Do you remember what this number had? What's the value? Yes, it's half, 0.5. This is the coefficient of the, this is your high frequency gain. You remember this discussion, the high frequency gain? This coefficient is the high frequency gain, which is the value of one minute times zero. They are, these are all connected to each other. We discussed them in some lecture before. But it all ties to the fact that the circulatory load has something, some non-circulatory aspect in it. It has some acceleration aspect in it. Anyway, we, we can come back later to it. But we discussed it in detail in some, some lecture. At any rate, for me now, here are the models. X structure, it's a proper. This thing, when we don't have H, we say it's strictly proper. The transfer function will have denominator strictly higher than the numerator degree. For aerodynamics, here it is, X aerodynamics. It's A aerodynamics, X aerodynamics. We already developed that. 
V aerodynamics times the input to the aerodynamics plus the input to the aerodynamics. Yeah, which is, we, we, we select the particular thing to be the input to the aerodynamics. V3 V3 very good. And the output was QC. This is now equal F aerodynamics X plus H aerodynamics times V3 code. And you can see immediately that the output of this guy going here to the input, the output of this guy going here to be the input. And let's write down the total model, the combined model. So please.